Welcome to News 2's coverage of Pat's Summit, Celebration of Life. Thank you so much for joining us as we remember Tennessee native and legendary Lady Vols coach Pat Summit. I'm Samantha Fisher. And I'm Eric Egan. Thousands are expected in Knoxville at the Thompson Bowling Arena at the University of Tennessee's campus tonight. And that's where News 2's Ann Holt and Bob Mueller are tonight anchoring our coverage. Good evening. Hey guys, good evening to you. You know, it really is a day of reflection here, Ann, and a day of pride for the University of Tennessee as family and friends and former players. They all gather here in Knoxville to pay a really a celebration of life to Pat Summit, to pay their respects. You know, this is your school. It's a proud moment for you. It's a it sad indeed. day, but there's also a lot of smiles as people remember all the great things that Pat Summit did. Drawing on each other's strength. That's what they've come to do, and this is certainly a celebration of life as you look at the inside now of Thompson Bowling arena the seating capacity of about 2100 so let's listen in family and friends that knew her best pat summit was a pillar of the basketball community and a driving force in women's athletics and her influence has brought people far and wide to knoxville tennessee and they've congregated here on the floor that carries her namesake Tonight, we will hear from the head coach of Tennessee women's basketball, Holly Warlick, who was an assistant under Coach Summit for 27 years. We will also hear from former Tennessee quarterback, Peyton Manning, who shared a special bond with Coach Summit. And of course, we will hear from Tyler Summit, the son of Pat Summit. 16 days ago, we mourned the loss of a legend. But tonight, we will be celebrating her life. Here is your host, Robin Roberts. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Tyler told me that that's his mom's favorite song. And how appropriate, two words that describe her so well, amazing. Grace. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the celebration of Pat Summit's life. And it's fitting, it's here in the house that Pat built on the court that bears her name so fittingly. She's in our midst. She's here through the coaches, the players she raised, her beloved family, an extended family who she loved so much and through all of us who benefited from her wisdom, her pearls of wisdom that live on in our hearts. A favorite of yours, Tyler, and mine too, left foot, right foot, breathe. Left foot, right foot, breathe. Just keep on moving. She, of course, also lives on through her foundation. What a valiant, valiant fight she waged against it. And how, in many ways, bringing awareness and attention was her final gift to us and to the world. Like many of you here, I had the incredible good fortune of Pat being a dear friend, a kindred soul and spirit. Like you, yeah, I miss Pat. I miss Pat. But you know what? We are here tonight because we back Pat. That's why we're here tonight. And so in that context, I invite you to be a part of this celebration with your tears and your cheers. If you want to cry, you let those tears flow. You want to cheer when you hear Rocky Top? Let's hear it. Express yourself like Pat did all those many years. By now, we're very familiar with the story of Pat being on a recruiting trip doing her best, always thinking of the Lady Vols, and on a recruiting trip, going into labor. While she was on a visit, future Vol, Michelle Marciniak. And there was no way on earth that Pat Summit was going to have her child anywhere but in this state of Tennessee. She was not going to have that child anywhere else. On that day, a relationship bond was born between mother and son that would prove to be enduring and strong, loving 
and fierce, respectful and compassionate. There are many titles that Pat Summit won, many titles, but the one title that meant the most to her, mother. Please welcome her beloved son, Tyler Summit. Good evening, and on behalf of our family, uh, especially my mom's brothers, sister, and her mom, Hazel, thank you all so much for, for being here, for watching. As, as Robin said, we celebrate my mom's life. Um, I know I definitely don't feel worthy to speak, but I'm so honored and grateful that I get to take part in this celebration. Um, this stool, is, it's here for a reason. As many of you fans know, and of course the players, this was her outward platform where she would sit and her Lady Ball family would, would gather around her for words of encouragement, words of wisdom, but usually a lot of harsh criticism. Again, this was, this was her platform where we saw her passion, her intensity, and of course the world famous stare. But something that I also want to celebrate tonight is my mom's heart, her enormous heart. And I'm here to tell you that inwardly, behind the scenes, she had three hearts. The heart of a mother, as Robin mentioned, a heart for others and a heart for Jesus Christ. And so let's start with the heart of a mother. I heard three words every single day of my life. I love you, every day. Didn't matter how busy she was, what she had to do, she took the time to stop and tell me that. And not only did she say it, but she showed it. She walked the talk. You might think that the famous coach, Pat Summit might not have time for the normal parental duties, like let's say cooking dinner. But I'm here to tell you the majority of my life, I'm talking six or seven nights a week, my mom was home cooking dinner. And for those of her that, for those of us that know her best, it, it wasn't carry out, it wasn't microwave meals. We're talking the stove, the grill, and two ovens going at the same time. I mean, Pat Summit felt lazy if she only had one o oven going at the same time. So she, she had the heart of a mother. That's, that's who she was. And her favorite mom story to tell was uh, one time when I was playing soccer, First, let's step back and realize as she's winning those back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back national championships in the 90s, she still took the time to come and watch her six-year-old play soccer. And if that doesn't say it enough for itself right there about her heart, then this story will. Um, at halftime, I, I ran over to her imaginary stool on the sideline, and I look up and I say, hey, mom, you know, how am I doing? Well, she looked down and she said, oh, you're doing all right. That's not Pat Summit. So I said, no, come on, Mom. How am I doing? And she first took her sunglasses off and got eye level with me. That's when I knew I was in for it. She said, son, you're not being aggressive. Get after the ball. Run after it. Don't be scared to get physical out there. Yes, ma'am. So I run back out there with those six-year-olds. Six and, folks, I was everywhere. I was all over the field. I was knocking people down. So I run back over to my, my coach after the game and I get some harsh criticism from him as well. And so I'm, I walk back to mom, I said, mom, I'm confused. You know, you tell me to be more aggressive, but my coach tells me I'm playing out of my position. She hadn't realized I was the goalie. That was the last time Pat Summit ever tried to coach soccer. <laughs> but it, it, it shows her heart. It shows her heart. And she wanted to help any and everybody, no matter if she knew the rules or not. And that, that brings me to her second heart, a heart for others. And, and she had it. I guarantee you there are so many people in this building, so many people watching right now that have stories of Pat Summit walking 100 miles an hour and then stopping on a dime 
to sign an autograph for a little girl, to say thank you to the janitor or the cafeteria worker. That was her heart for others. She would sacrifice, no matter where she was, where her stool was at the time, whether it was uh, her, her office, her office chair, an airplane seat, it didn't matter where she was. She would sacrifice for others. Uh, she would even sacrifice for our dog. As some of you remember the story, she saved our dog by backhanding a raccoon off our back deck. Uh, a similar story that, that you all don't know is a time we were at the beach, my mom sitting in her, her beach chair and some friends and my, my dad and I were out in the ocean playing and somebody down the beach yells shark. So what does Pat Summit do? She gets up and sprints directly at the five foot shark. Nobody was hurt except for my mom who we later lo learned broke her ankle sprinting so hard at the shark. Again, she would sacrifice for anybody. Her heart was so big for other people, it didn't matter who was gathered around her stool at the time. Another example that I think everybody in here, everybody watching can remember is what we think about when we think about Pat Summit in 2007 and 2008. Well, we think about those two banners, the back-to-back -back national championships. But I tell you, behind the scenes, behind closed doors, it wasn't the same success story. There were a lot of hardships that, that she went through, and I think a lot of people will tell you that was some of the hardest years of my mom's life. She was still dealing with the pain of, of losing her father, who for the majority of her life was her motivation. She wanted to get his approval so bad. She was going through a divorce in those years. She was dealing with the intense pain of rheumatoid arthritis or even coming to practice, getting out of her chair, getting off of her stool, caused pain for her body. But no matter what the pain, emotional, physical, a lot of people did not see that. Why? We were her motivation. She had a heart for all of us. She was the strongest person I have ever known or that I ever will know. <clears throat> but a lot of people don't know where that strength came from. Her favorite Bible verse was Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. She had a heart for Jesus. One of my favorite memories uh, was back in 2012 when we were baptized together again in front of friends and family. Another example of her faith uh, was in the last few days of her life when I'm sitting there by her side and for a son to hear some come up to her and say, Pat, I love you, thank you, you brought me closer to God. It's the most incredible feeling a son can ever have for his mother, a child can ever have for a parent. And it just showed that Pat Summit didn't have to talk the talk, she walked the talk. She showed her faith through her actions. And I know in that way, but in so many others, I'm still learning so much from my mom. I still have so much to learn from her. But here's what she would want now. For all of us that in some way have been influenced by Pat Summit, she wouldn't just want us to remember her example. She would want us to go out and to follow it. So let's not just celebrate her legacy. Let's now carry it on. Let's find our own stool in our lives. And let's strive to have a heart like Pat Summits. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. Now, we, we can remember you on that stool. Many of us can remember you pulling that out. The 161 Lady Vols, 161 Lady Vols that Pat coached through her 38 years. They will tell you she was so much more than a coach. She was a friend, she was a mentor, she was family, and to them, she was just Pat. And Pat will be the first one to tell you that the reason that the banners are hanging here, the reason that there have been so many accolades and championships 
because of the hard work, the tenacity, every single time the Lady Balls stepped on the court. They exceeded Pat's expectation, and the women delivered every single time. So join me in welcoming two representatives of the Lady Ball family, Shelley Sexton Collier and Ketch, Tamika Ketchings. Tyler and I didn't talk about what we were going to talk about, but you're going to hear some of the same things. When I first came to Tennessee to play for Pat, my teammates and I thought we were on the cross-country team. She would have us run Cherokee Boulevard, which was about five miles, and other trails around the campus. She would run with us sometimes and try to outrun us. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. There were times that as an injured player my freshman year, and then again, as her graduate assistant, she would ask me to run with her. I was just hoping and praying to keep up. Of course, not keeping up with Pat Summit was not an option. Pat loved to run. My teammates and I also thought we were on the track team after we got killed by Texas on the road. Yeah, she found out that Coach Conrad had him running on the track 400s and 200s. So when we got back to Tennessee, we had to do the same thing. Only once we ran seven 400s, but that was after a two-hour basketball practice. She didn't run those sprints with us, though. <laughs> Nevertheless, Pat ran her race, and she ran it to win. 1 Corinthians 24 through 25 says, Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it for a crown that will last forever. Pat loved her coffee. I don't think anyone anywhere had a stronger cup than she did. That's why she always had ab abnormal energy, and that is how she always wanted all of her players to play with abnormal energy. She loved her coffee, loved it with honey and hazelnut cream. And we would have our coffee, and then we would make sure to get our workout in. Her ab work, always 100 straight crunches, and then 100 on each side for side crunches, and then we would walk. So what do you have going on today? A few minutes later on our walk, the same question. So what do you have going on today? And I would just repeat it over and over again. You get up every day and you do it all over again. No matter what you got going on in your life, good, bad, or ugly, you get up every day and you do what Pat told my husband when he asked her once, how do you handle this disease you are facing, Pat? And she said, right foot, left foot, breathe, repeat. That's her message that we should be so concerned about others that we don't have time to worry about ourselves. It's always about something bigger than you. You gotta have a big old attitude, as Pat would say. And she did, all the way to the end. Look at the person beside of you at this very moment and decide that you are going to make an impact in a powerful and positive way, because that's what Pat did for everyone. Pat expected a lot out of her players, all of us, but especially the point guard position. You were expected to be an extension of the coach on the floor, and when things didn't go well, it was your fault. In 1983 through 87, I played point guard for Pat, and I was hard on myself and got down on myself a lot. Pat pulled me aside and she told me that if I was going to lead this team, I had to stop getting down on myself because that was a form of selfishness. If I wanted to have the team in my palm of my hand, I had to get over myself and get, in, get my mind on my teammates. You need to be so busy about encouraging them that you don't have time to think about yourself, she said. Pat was always prepared. Her will to win was great, 
but her will to prepare to win was greater. Sometimes, though, I've realized that there are moments in your life that you just cannot prepare for, and that's when you trust your instinct. That's when you trust your gut, and that's when your character is truly revealed. Pat was prepared when she walked into a room to speak and when she walked into practice or to a game to coach. And no one, that's right, Tyler, no one could walk as fast or intense as Pat could. Her notes were amazing and always very detailed and, of course, handwritten. Yet there were times in her life that stuff hit her head on, and through everything, she had tremendous faith in God. She didn't talk about it. She walked about it. She never pushed her faith on anyone, but she lived her life in such a way that her life and her life lessons exemplified Christ. She was always very professional and had a genuine concern for others. She may not like or agree with what you are doing, but she always cared, especially for her players, no matter what. She was always solid. She was always consistent. She loved reading scripture and listening to spiritual music. As already you've heard in her house, when you would walk into her house, there was a Bible verse hanging to the right on a wall, which says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, Philippians 4.13. And one of the last songs that I heard Pat listening to that her caregivers had playing for her when I was on one of my last visits was a song entitled, It Is Well With My Soul. One verse says, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Someday we will all take our last breath. All that we've accomplished and all the accolades that we have received will no longer matter. And Pat knew that. No God, no peace. No God, no peace. Pat stood for a lot, including the fight for Alzheimer's, but she stood most on the promises of her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right foot, left foot, breathe, repeat. To him be the glory and honor. I was in eighth grade the first time I came across Pat Summit indirectly. I was sitting at home flipping through the channel and all of a sudden I stopped, drawn into an icy blue stare of the one and only. <laughs> I was hypnotized instantly and for whatever reason couldn't pull away from the screen. I remember thinking to myself, even then, I just hope I get good enough to play for this lady. The passion, the stare, the determination, the willpower, the fight, that's what I wanted. Over time, that's what pushed me to take my game to another level. Fast forward to my sophomore year in high school, the first time I got a letter from the Lady Vol, signed by Mickey and Howie. I don't know what it was, but I pasted that letter on my wall, right next to my favorite player, Alonzo Mourning. We can never prepare for a moment like this, although ultimately we know it will come. But I don't know why Pat seemed invincible in every single way. I knew coming to UT that I would be pushed and that I would be challenged, but I believe that all of us Lady Vol welcome that, some more than others. <laughs> no names. <laughs> and we were all willing to be molded into the people that we are today. Pat was more than our coach. She was our friend, she was our mentor, she was our leader, she was our mother, she was our father, and for me, she was my quiet through my storm. While we didn't speak every day, I knew that she was just a phone call away. When I look out over the sea of our Lady Vol family, we are all brought together, joined in unity for this moment because of our wonderful leader, Pat. I can't imagine how different our lives would have been if we had chosen anywhere but here. We came here to play ball and to get an education, but we left with so much more. While she valued what we did on the court, she valued even more what we did in the classroom, the community, 
and ultimately that we would all individually what we would bring to the world. There have been a lot of tears shed over the past month as we watched our heroes slip away from the earthly realm to the heavenly one. And while it's been tough, the amazing stories that have been shared over the past few weeks have made this celebration a little bit easier. I know Pat is looking down and continues to look down on each of us as we celebrate her life today and what she means and has done for so many of us. She gave us hope. She gave us direction. She gave us a sense of coolness through what we did on and off the court. She was the epitome of what being great is all about. And that bubbled over to us through her expectation for each one of us. We must be great. Standing here today, I go back to the phone call Pat made to me when she was diagnosed with dementia. She said, Ketch, don't be scared. I'm gonna fight like none other. Well, through her fight and continuous fight, Pat has showed us how strong to be and how great to be once again. I dedicated the 2012 season to her and we finished strong with the championship with her in the building. The hug that I gave her that night, I will never forget. As we embraced in that moment, I swear no one else was there. Everything just seemed so perfect. Nothing else really mattered. That moment, the real Pat was there and was able to witness more than a basketball accomplishment, but a life accomplishment. Tonight we celebrate Pat and we all remember the greatness that she exuded in everything that she did. Tonight we cry, we dance, we laugh, we sing to honor Pat and everything about her. I like all the ladies all to stand at this time. <laughs> to our leaders. To our leader, our mentor, our mother, our friend, our inspiration, our angel. Thank you for being a faithful servant in all that you did and now allowing us to walk the walk of life with you. This is not a goodbye, but an until we meet again. We love you, Pat, for everything. Pat's legacy in women's basketball continues to live on today and will for years to come thanks to the impact she had on the coaching profession. Basketball sidelines around the nation and at all levels are filled with coaches who can point directly to Pat and her influence on the game as the reason why they are there today. No one was more familiar with just how much she impacted those around her and grew the game of women's basketball than those who worked closely beside her. Please join me in welcoming two of Pat's former assistant coaches and closest friends, Mickey DeMoss and Holly Warlick. Have to pull this down. Get this down to my size here. You know, I want to thank everybody for being here. I know it means a lot to Pat and to honor her and, and celebrate her life. You know, we have so many former Lady Vols here that I'm so proud of, former staff members and colleagues. We have some opposing coaches here, and we have some officials here. Just in case y'all were wondering, the officials uh, showed up, so if any of you get out of hand, there are some whistles in the house. I guess that means Pat was pretty special for the officials to show up. Um, she's probably looking down going, why are, why are y'all not at work? Everybody needs to be working right now. You know, honestly, this is one of the hardest things that I've, that I've ever had to do, is to speak about Pat in the past tense, because she meant so much to me, to you, and to the world. Because Pat was our friend. 
She was our coach and she was our family. And what a family she created. An unbelievable family like no other. And it was built on love and loyalty. You know, Pat's success never changed her. All the fame and the fortune, she never forgot who she was. She never forgot where she came from. And in fact, as an assistant coach, you were taught humility as well, being Pat's assistant. There were times in the airport that I would get trampled, I would get boxed out by people trying to get to Pat. And so one day, I'm standing there in the airport, and this lady runs up to me. She has a some paper and a pen. She said, aren't you Mickey DeMoss? And I, I said, yes, I am. <laughs> and she said, aren't you Pat Summit's assistant? I said, well, yes, ma'am, I am. And she said, would you please go get her autograph for me? <laughs> I'm like, really? But you know, just a few years later, justice was served. We were down in Florida at a staff retreat, and we walk in a restaurant. We walk in this whole table. People turned around and just stared at Pat and was nudging and whispering. So we sat down. Pat goes, did you see all those people over there just staring at me? I said, well, Pat, they probably know who you are. She said, all the way down here in Florida? I said, well, Pat, I said, you know, you've been on the cover of Sports Illustrated. You've had an HBO special. You know, you've got three books out, and they do read occasionally down in Florida. So, <laughs> and so I said, so they, they probably know who you are. She said, well, I don't know. So she said, well, I'm, I'm going to excuse myself, go to the ladies' room. So she happens to, she had to go by that table. So she walks by the table. She goes, hey, gang, how are y'all doing? They said, oh, we're doing great. You know, you look so familiar to us. <laughs> and she said, oh, do I really? And this lady said, don't you work at Ace Hardware? That is a true story. <laughs> and I am so glad that I was there to hear it. <laughs> you know, Pat's philosophy was you win with people. And one of her favorite quotes by Alex Haley, anytime you see a turtle on top of a fence post, you know he had some help. And he always, she always gave credit where credit was due. She never thought that she did all this by herself, and she always made it known. You know, Pat was a leader. I mean, a tremendous leader. And, you know, she led, and people wanted to follow her. And she would always say, you're either leading or you're following. If you're not leading and you're not following, then you're not doing anything, and I really don't have time for you. And so one day we were in practice, and I mean, the players were working hard, down in a stance, boxing out, doing everything that, you know, we wanted them to do. And I kind of went over by Pat and I said, hey, I said, team looks pretty good today. Well, I found out real quickly that Pat didn't like it when things were going too smooth, you know. So she said, hold it, stop everything, hold practice. Well, you could have heard a pin drop, as you can imagine. The players look over there at her. And she looked at one of our players, Lisa Harrison, I remember, and she said, Lisa, what have you done for your team today? And Lisa just kind of did like that. She goes, well, Pat, I, I don't know. She said, my point exactly. <laughs> so she never, she never wanted you to get too comfortable in your position. And she always pushed you to be better. And in closing, to me, the real accomplishment of Pat's life is this. You win 1,098 games, eight national championships, and what people talk about in the end is not about how much you won, but how much you did for others. 
And I just want to thank Pat and just know that we know her heart is as big as this arena. Thank you. I get to follow that. Um, it is a, a true honor to be standing before you uh, tonight. I think Pat would really get a kick out of this, but she also wouldn't be very happy because it's about her. Patricia Sue Head Summit, AKA Trish. Trish to her family and her closest friends that she grew up with. AKA Sandra Lee Fields. Sandra Lee Fields to a police officer who pulled her over one night. <laughs> Pat Summit in trouble, really? Of course she was. She was pulled over for speeding early in the morning, and in fear of her father finding out, she told the police officer, police officer her name was Sandra Lee. He said, Sandra Lee what? You know you have to have two names in your first name in, in Tennessee. She said, Sandra Lee Fields. So yes, Pat Summit got in trouble, but she was much smarter than the former Lady Vols and current Lady Vols. Number one, she didn't use her real name. And number two, she didn't put it up on social media. So you all can see that Pat had a little, had a need for speed, and I don't think the tractors in Henrietta had a, a governor on them. It didn't, it must not have controlled the speed, but I think Pat Summit was born to fly. One of her first cars that Pat Summit owned was a 300Z, and it wasn't just a 300Z, it was a turbo 300Z. Pat thought uh, when she drove, you can and must, you must multitask. So Pat would be going about, I'm gonna be nice, 80 miles an hour. Her rear view mirror was not for seeing behind her. It was to straighten it up, put her mascara on, talk on the phone and drive with her knee. When you were a passenger, passenger with Coach Summit, you did not look at the speedometer because, number one, you did not see the needle. <laughs> number two, you did not look straight ahead of fear of you would see what she's about to hit. You simply looked out the side and you just prayed, <laughs> please let us get to your, our destination, please. She loved that car. Like Sandra Lee feels, Pat got pulled over a lot. I often wondered, how did she avoid so many tickets? Well, Pat had a plan. You know, she always had a plan, as Mickey said, always had a plan. Well, she started keeping her purse in the trunk. She'd get pulled over, and the officer would say, obviously, can I see your license? Well, officer, let me, my purse is in the trunk. Can I just get out of my car and get it? She gets out, opens her trunk, and there's about a half a dozen basketballs that just so happened to be signed by Pat Summit. <laughs> of course, the police officer would say, can I get one of those autographed balls? <laughs> and Pat goes, why, of course. And we all know what the next line would, was going to be. Now you sold down, Miss Pat. <laughs> all of a sudden, they were on first name basis. So I started out as a kid from Knoxville, Tennessee with a dream. My dream, it came true, but I found a coach, a mentor, and a great friend all in one. Pat was gracious. She had an unbelievable sense of humor and she actually was able to laugh at herself. She was tough, but kind. And when she used my last name, Warlick, it was not good. <laughs> Pat had a way of getting everything out of you. 
Now, I would get in trouble for, it wasn't really bad. I'd get in trouble, and I would, before I'd go into Pat's office, I would say, I'm not saying a word. Well, when I walked in and that door shut, and it's me and Pat Summit, I would see, and she'd go, you, I, know, I already know everything, so you might as well just tell the truth. I know everything you did. I just start singing like a little canary. <laughs> so much for my, my being able to hold back. Pat enjoyed life, and life loved her back. There wasn't too much Pat was afraid of. Really, there was not, except for one time, and it was singing in public. We were, I mean, you see Pat, she's gone, she's gone through championships, uh, before games, never nervous. So we were behind, uh, she was down in this back hall behind the, the bleachers here, and she had a mic. Of course, it was off, and she was pacing up and down, practicing Rocky Top. Did it up and down, and I, I, I just was like, okay, Pat. I get it, you know. I said, what are you so nervous about? And so she said, uh, it was before she went out on, on uh, before the men, halftime of the men's game, she said, before I left the house today, she said, Miss Hazel told me, she said, now Trish, you know you're on national TV. She said, don't embarrass me or yourself. <laughs> you know, we're here to honor Coach Summit tonight, and I really can't think of a better way to do that than sing her favorite song for, with, with her one last time. So tonight, on the count of three, all right, will you please sing Rocky Top with our head cheerleader okay all right so when I count to three they're Wish gonna that I it, was on there you go top down, down in the Tennessee, Tennessee hills ain't, ain't no smoggy smoke no rocky top ain't, ain't no, no telephone bills rocky top you'll always be home sweet home, sweet home. Rocky Top, Tennessee. Yes. You got to love it. Wow. Pat, I love you. You'll always be in my heart. We are going to keep your spirit alive here at the University of Tennessee. And as Pat always said to me, once a lady ball, always a lady ball. You deserve it, so go get it. That's what you gotta think. You gotta go get it. You gotta earn it. They don't think you can put you out there. You gotta show some fire and some competitiveness. I don't know about y'all, but I want to win a national I want to win! championship number eight in 08. It was like the air got let out of the room. We lost a, a superhero <laughs> um, and a great friend. In the end, it's, um, 
Pat was just a great friend. Pat was definitely the head of our family. We followed her. Our family followed her for advice. We leaned on her in a lot of tough times, and she definitely was our leader. Pat Summit was a remarkable example to everybody around her. The influence she had on her student athletes was phenomenal. But she also had a great influence on all the rest of us who were around her. I think Pat's role on this earth was to be a pioneer. I think God gave her a gift of the voice, the presence, to show people that you can really do anything you put your mind to. That's the type of person she was. And there's nobody like her. It was never just about Pat. It was really never just about women's basketball. It was about making a difference in young people's lives. She was a superstar. They wanted everybody to treat her like a farm girl from Henrietta. And when I think about her not being here anymore, I just absolutely think about what we've lost as a person. every minute I had with you for giving me the opportunity a dream come true to play for you to play for Tennessee to represent the state of Tennessee I really looked up to you I always will you're our hero I love you like you're my mom And I'm so thankful that you allowed me to be a part of your life. We're going to do the best we can to carry on this legacy that you've built and continue the Lady Ball tradition. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to really miss you, and I love you. Pat, it's with a heavy heart that I say goodbye to you today. I, I can't begin to tell you the impact you've made on, on my life. You've helped me mature. You've helped me grow. You've taught me the game of basketball. But I think more importantly, you taught me what life's all about. And when I look back, I know I have memories. I got great pictures, I have videos, I have you on my mind, and I'll always have you in my heart, but I'm not going to lie to you, I'm going to miss you, I'm going to miss you, Pat. You take that smile up to heaven. And you take those blue eyes and you stare down at anybody that's not doing right. I know you're good at that. And then I know you put an arm around them and hug them. Tell them everything's going to be okay. And I know right now you got your arms around me. Tell me it's going to be all right. I love you, Pat. With all my heart. I hope you rest in peace. Today, it's not about me. It's about everyone out here that loves the University of Tennessee, and I don't think I'll ever forget it.
Mickey and Holly, thank you so much, Mickey and Holly, for making us laugh, making us cry, making us feel. I have to say to you, to all the Lady Balls that are here, thank you. Thank you for sharing Pat with us. And to her mama, your family, man, thank you. You know, you make us feel like we're part of the family. We're, we're, th those inside jokes, we were laughing along like we were there too, with, you know, the Ace Hardware and all that. But <laughs> that is the beauty, that is the beauty of Pat. Um, earlier today, someone was asking me, they said, why do you think she was able to transcend? Why was it beyond basketball, beyond this court? And I said, authenticity. People are drawn to somebody who just truly just wants the best for everyone else and is so selfless. She was the most genuine person. And yes, her beloved Lady Vols mean so much to her, but all the athletes here at UT felt her presence. All the athletes here felt Pat Summit. And it meant so much, Peyton Manning last night on the ESPYs mentioning Pat as he did, and it wasn't surprising as, at all that he did that. <laughs> A true friend, honorary chair of her foundation, generous donation that he and his wife made. Please welcome Tennessee's own Peyton Manning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. I am wrestling tonight with saying one last goodbye to a cherished friend. As you can tell by those who have spoken so lovingly about Pat before me, I don't have any monopoly on insights into this magnificent and rare woman. Somehow I think it's ironic that we're celebrating the memory of Pat tonight when it was this terrible disease that stripped her of her memory and ultimately her life. Ironic that the Coliseum is filled with people who want nothing more than to remember every word, every glance, every victory, every loyal gesture Pat Summit shared with the world. It is a rarity to attend a celebration of life service for someone who literally changed history. But that's what we're doing here tonight. Pat Summit didn't just change the history of Tennessee basketball or make this arena notable well beyond the borders of this state. She changed the history of the sports she loved and of sports in general. She almost single-handedly made women's sports relevant, well beyond mothers and daughters, sisters and grandmothers. Heck, every Tennessee football player. <laughs> heck, every Tennessee football player, including me, would have been proud to have been coached by Pat Summit. And when she keynoted the Tennessee annual football spring clinic a number of years ago, Coach David Cutcliffe will tell you that she mesmerized that day a room full of crusty football coaches like no other speaker has done before or since. And when Pat finished, Coach Cut said she got the greatest standing ovation of anyone, including legendary coaches like Bo Shim Beckler and Pat Dye. And if you ask how close Pat and I were, all I can tell you is this. I don't have anybody else's memorabilia in my office. An exception, I have two basketballs autographed to my son Marshall and my daughter Mosley. The Sharpie signature reads, Coach Pat Summit. We had a special bond, a bond between two friends, a bond between two proud ambassadors for this university that we both loved. Our bond was forged in part Our bond was forged in part by the searing heat of competition which drove us. That bond was colored by Tennessee orange and rang out to the tune of Rocky Top. 19 years ago, I came to see Pat Summit deciding whether I should stay for my junior or senior year. And I sat in her office for two hours 
she given me great advice on what she thought I should do. As a coach and as a person, Pat did more than outthink uncertainty and stare down competitors. She stared down doubts. If you were recruited by Pat and her staff, it was like a casting call for greatness. She epitomized the Lady Vols. More than that, and because of her actions, she gave new depth and dimension to the word lady. Her memory Her memory should be like the perfect game plan that drives every one of us to fiercely go after our dreams, no matter what opposition gets in our way, and to do it with as much grace as ferocity, and in the end, to generate respect for the way we went after it with abandon. Pat's words may have inspired, but it won't be those words that embody her greatness or that she will be remembered for most. She and the great Sally Jenkins wrote a handful of best-selling books that many of us have read. But I seriously doubt that it will be Pat's thoughts captured on paper that will echo most for people years from now. If you ask me, Pat's true greatness was in her actions, the way she walked onto that court and commanded the sidelines, the way her presence electrified and her stare quieted a room. It was the substance of her life, her example, that will resonate most. I had the honor to introduce Pat as the recipient of ESPN's 2012 Arthur Ashe Award for Courage. Pat Summit epitomized courage. All she needed to hear was there was a challenge ahead for her to defy expectations. She was a teacher on and off the court. Even after her diagnosis, she refused to shy away from her own vulnerability. She insisted that like her record-setting basketball victories, she would win this life battle with the help of others. When I returned to Knoxville throughout the years, or Pat would travel to Indianapolis to see Tamika play for the Indiana Fever, we'd make a point to get together over a steak and a beer. Last summer, I was in Knoxville, and I knew that Pat wasn't doing so well. Coach Fulmer and I decided to drive over to visit our old friend. We knew she probably wouldn't know our names, and she didn't, but that wasn't the point. Pat smiled a lot as we sat and, and spent time with her, and she seemed to just enjoy having our company. We didn't know if it even mattered that we were there, but deep inside, we both hoped it would. Two weeks ago, at Pat's funeral, Shamiqua Holtzclaw and I caught up with each other again. She, like so many of Pat's former players, stayed in close contact with her. Shamiqua told me that even as Pat's memory continued to fade, if Pat saw one of my games or commercials on TV, she pointed at the screen and said, that's my friend. He comes to visit me. There goes my friend. Two weeks ago at her gravesite, Two weeks ago at her gravesite, the tears rolled down my cheeks. After I left, I got a text from Sally Jenkins that reminded me of Pat's words to anyone in enough agony to come crying to her. With a nudge full of kindness and a move on mentality, she'd tell them, toughen up, buttercup. <laughs> well, I challenge each of you here tonight to unleash the power of friends telling friends, of telling everyone you know that there is hope of getting a handle on this crippling disease. But it will take all of us and many more. If you can, honor the memory of this woman that we love and admire by supporting the Pat Summit Foundation and the Alzheimer's Clinic built in her name. Because when all of us are forgotten, the world will remember our friend Pat Summit. Just take a look around this room. There are lots of tears, and yes, I feel the sting of my own. So in the spirit of Pat, I'll echo her own words. Toughen up, buttercup. And in saying goodbye for the last time, we can all say, there goes our friend.
Thank you, Peyton. Absolutely beautiful. Steak and a beer. I can just see you all. Can see you there. And she loved music. Couldn't sing. She couldn't sing. We, we, we heard that earlier. Pat couldn't sing. And she had this little dance move, too, that she'd always do. I never understood that. But she loved music. She loved music. And music soothes our souls. And we didn't have to look far. One of Pat's favorites, Knoxville's own Con Hunley, is going to have a musical tribute to Pat. can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord In the midst of his children, the Lord said he would be. It doesn't take very many. It can be just two or three. And I feel that same sweet spirit that I felt. That I've been with the Lord. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear. Show angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. There's a holy hush around us as God's glory. I've touched the hem of his garment. I can almost see his face, and my heart is overflowing with the fullness of his joy. I know without a doubt that I've been with. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on his face. Surely the presence of the Lord. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place.
Thank you so much, Con. And now I'd like to ask John Wood, senior pastor of Cedar Springs Presbyterian Church, Pat's former minister and a friend of the Summit family, to lead us in a benediction and closing prayer. Like so many of you, I've been in this room when toward the end of the game, the Lady Vols pulled ahead and this place exploded. And you look around in the stands and what you see are all of the postures of worship. People lost in wonder, love and praise, as the old hymn said. And we're made for that. We are made for worship. We're made to delight in the kind of excellence that we saw lived so beautifully in Pet Summit. But the quality of a life, as Tyler reminded us at the very beginning of this evening, depends on what one ultimately worships, what we ultimately give ourselves to. And it was my unique privilege to see Pat at worship and particularly in the last years of her life as Alzheimer's had its way with her. She would come in, she'd sit right in front with her dear friends, Mary Margaret and Lex Carter. And sometimes they'd have to lead her in. It was clear she wasn't sure where she was, why she was there. But the moment that the call to worship was given, the moment the music started, she came back for that hour, and you saw the life, the vigor, the intensity, the joy, as she was lost in wonder, love, and praise. And so I want to give you, in conclusion, a good word that God gave Moses' brother Aaron and told him to put on God's people a word that I was able to give week after week to Pat and all those worshiping with her. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his presence upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Some bad morning when the slop is on, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Well, I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away. Of this life we have grown, I fly away like a bird from prison bars have flown. I'll fly away, and I'll fly away. Oh, Lord, don't you know? I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Away. 
have you, Pat. Fly away, fly away. Thank you, Khan. Thank you so much. And thank you all for being a part of this very special celebration. I know that there are a number of coaches, both in the SEC and other conferences. I know Mickey and Holly alluded to it earlier, but could the coaches that are here in support of Pat please stand so we can, can see all her colleagues who are here to support Pat. Look at that. Look at that. Woo! Man. I don't know about y'all, but I got chills. And that again, no one else could bring all these coaches together but Pat Summit. And she did that. And she brought us together. And we are going to remember her, but thanks again for being here and helping us to celebrate this remarkable, remarkable woman. No words or music could ever seem adequate to express the love and the loss that we feel tonight. Her faith and her love of God and people, which were so evident in the way she lived her life, will remain with us forever. We will always have our favorite Pat stories, and thank you so much for sharing. So I'm sure she's like, really, really? Do you had to tell them all those stories? <laughs> we are forever grateful to this incredible woman for all that she did to remind us that if you dream it and you pursue it with everything in you, it can be done. As we close our celebration, I would ask everyone to please remain in your seats and allow Pat's beloved family to leave and the guests of the family and you will know trust me you will know when it is your turn to leave because you're going to hear rocky top but first please allow the family and the guests of the family as you stay seated thank you Certainly an awe-inspiring celebration of life here in Thompson Bowling Arena as they celebrated Pat Summit. We heard from her son, Tyler Summit, who told the stories of his mother having three hearts, one as a mother, one as a coach, and one as a person who loved God. He spoke about how his mother was always there who cooked dinner, who was also a coach on the soccer field. We heard from her longtime assistants who spoke of the love that she shared and breathed into this community, this university. Peyton Manning even spoke of Pat Summit and the way that she carried herself and the way that we should carry on her legacy. Gino Ariyama was here, Dawn Staley, Sherry Cole, head coaches from all over the nation to celebrate Pat Summit, a legend, a mentor, a hero. She simply was Pat Summit. What a service for Pat Summit. Uh, hearing from remarkable speakers, the host Robin Roberts, uh, sure. who had a special relationship with Pat, uh, guiding us through that uh, that service with such ability. And it's so evident. We talk about the 1,098 wins, you know, a record, obviously, the eight national titles, but her legacy, without a doubt, it was so evident during this broadcast, is the legions of, of people and players mm -hmm. and associates and fellow coaches um, lives that she's impacted. If you're not from Tennessee, you probably heard of Pat Summit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know about her, her accomplishments in women's basketball, and you know maybe possibly about the records, but what I enjoyed hearing about today uh, was how she changed the history of the sport, but also the trajectory of so many lives. And she knew, or she remembered everybody, every, every woman who ever played for her. Mm -hmm. And you could see the tears in their eyes and, and their words today honoring her. 
it was very meaningful. Yeah, one of the stories that really stuck out to me, and I think we heard this a couple weeks ago when she first passed, but it was again echoed uh, today and this evening how people would, Pat Summit was always available. People yeah. would dial her up, her, her former players during um, very large moments in their own lives. I mm -hmm. remember one player saying how uh, leading up to her wedding day, she called Pat Summit. Yeah. And Pat Summit made it known that she was always available to, to play that figure, to be that, not only that coach, but that mother figure for mm -hmm. so many people. Uh, we weren't sure that her son, uh, Tyler Summit, would speak today, but he did. And we want to just reflect again on what he had to say about his mother. At halftime, I I ran over to her imaginary stool on the sideline and I look up and I say, hey mom, you know, how am I doing? Well, she looked down and she said, oh, you're doing all right. That's not Pat Summit. So I said, no, come on mom, how am I doing? And she first took her sunglasses off and got eye level with me. That's when I knew I was in for it. She said, son, you're not being aggressive. Get after the ball, run after it. Don't be scared to get physical out there. Yes, ma'am. So I run back out there with those six-year-olds six and folks, I was everywhere. I was all over the field. I was knocking people down. So I run back over to my, my coach after the game and I get some harsh criticism from him as well. And so I'm, I walk back to mom, I said, mom, I'm confused. You know, you tell me to be more aggressive, but my coach tells me I'm playing out of my position. She hadn't realized I was the goalie. He, uh, he wowed the crowd a little bit, sharing um, some personal stories. Of course, he's the son of Pat Summit. He, al he also talked about her enormous heart, something yeah. that people who knew her could also get a glimpse into. He talked about her devotion to her family, her players, mm -hmm. and of course, her faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, quoting scripture tonight, mm -hmm. and, and, and of course, her pastor also talking about, I thought this was really remarkable that, that even in her you know, toward the end of the progression with Alzheimer's that she would come into the service and she would hear the hymns and it was like she came alive again. Exactly, she was focused. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Uh, we have Bob Mueller and Ann Holt who have been anchoring our coverage from Knoxville all day long, standing by right now. Bob and Ann. Hey guys, what a terrific service, huh? I mean, oh. just tears and laughter and great stories and, you know, things that people are going to remember forever, not just about Pat Summit, but about this night as they honored Pat Summit. So moving, so emotionally, and so eloquently told by people who knew her best and loved her most. You know, we saw some of the great speakers, the coaches and the players, and, you know, folks watching probably didn't get a chance to recognize a lot of folks out there. It was filled with VIPs, ESPN reporters, Governor Haslam, former Governor Don uh, Sundquist, Don, Don Sundquist mm -hmm. both Senators Alexander and Bob Corker. I mean, it was filled with folks who have not only respect for this university and this state, but certainly for Pat Summit. Uh, you know, they came in from Washington today. They came in from across the country. A lot of the players, as many as 190 different Lady Vols play. And I'll tell you, and one of the most moving moments is when Holly Warlick had all the Lady Vols stand up in the place oh, to the standing ovation for all the players. Absolutely. And I noticed that the seating arrangement, the uh, Lady Vol family right there behind um, Tyler Summit and uh, Pat Summit's mother, and uh, next to Tyler on the other side was uh, Pat's sister and the rest of her family. All the family coming together there. And what is really, uh, it wasn't amazing because I've often felt this myself. You know, Pat Summit, as great as she was, and the way that we have always treated her, even as royalty, she was simply known as Pat. Mm. And it was pointed out tonight that she never forgot who she was, that she was a country girl from Middle Tennessee, never forgot her roots. And that is so important because that's part of the charm of being able to make all of us feel very important in her presence. I know you knew her a lot better than I did, but I did have the privilege twice to interview her. And she was just always so cordial and so giving and what do you need and what can I help you with? And, you know, wanted to tell you how excited they were. This was during the years when they were getting ready to, get, to try for a back-to-back -back championship. And, you know, so excited, not for herself, so excited right. for the state, That's for right. the University of Tennessee, and especially for her players. And you, you know, I don't think I've ever seen a more emotional farewell 
than the players and coaches tonight in the video. Folks are watching the ceremony. When they spoke to the camera directly and talked to Pat Summit, and the tears rolled down their eyes as they said their goodbye, it was really moving. And this was the second goodbye for many of them. Of course, Pat uh, was eulogized in a private service about a couple of weeks ago. And as Peyton pointed out, this was his second time to say goodbye to his friend. So, uh, and, and this was an emotional thing. We talked to a number of people who were at the first service who came back tonight to say goodbye and they talked about they thought that it was all over you know that they had kind of gotten through or gotten over a lot of it but it came back today when they saw many of Pat's friends and they saw their own friends and they were able tonight to kind of put some finality to it you know what was touching too was as they were saying their farewell and saying their goodbye, not just goodbye, but how much they were gonna miss being able to talk to her, how much they were gonna miss being able to communicate and, and get advice from her, how much they were gonna miss just being able to see her. I mean, it was really moving and really showed the impact as we've talked about for a couple of weeks now after Pat's passing, what impact she had on her players and coaches well beyond the basketball court. I mean, during that intense time when they're playing is one thing, but she was part of their lives as they grew and left the university mm -hmm. and started families and businesses of their own. And her impact uh, reached far beyond what many of us, you know, will, will ever know. Uh, when you think about the fact that uh, I, when I talked with uh, Sally Jenkins today, and she talked about uh, Pat because she spent so much time with her, writing three of the books with her. And she talked about when Pat uh, became a mother, and she also kind of struggled with the things that mothers, working yeah. mothers, were struggling with at that time. And you know, uh, we were able to watch Tyler grow up courtside with his mother. We watched him cut down championship <laughs> nets. He traveled with her a lot. And so, uh, you know, she, as working women did during that time when the working environment was not as friendly you know for for women uh, and their children was able to show us that hey you can still be a mother you can still be a champion well in 38 years coaching this team she started when she was 22 years old a very young woman and she, you're right she became married became a mother and built this program all during that same time. Talk about multitasking and uh. being an example of yes, you can do it, and yes, you can succeed, and yes, you can have a loving family too. I mean, you saw it in Tyler's remarks. You could tell how touched he was, uh, and especially about the faith of his mother and how exactly. much that has eased the pain of this exactly. terrible passing. Nothing will replace his mom, but help, faith seems to help. We've got a lot more to come to bring you more as we celebrate the life of Pat Summer. We're going to show you and let you hear some of the tributes that were played earlier. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Ford Freedom Sales Event is on. Hurry in for our biggest event of the year. Now get a Ford F-Series with 0 for 60, giving you freedom from interest. Plus, for a limited time, get a 1,000 smart bonus on specially tagged pickups. America's best-selling trucks 39 years straight are built Ford tough. During the Ford Freedom Sales Event, get 0 for 60 on Ford F-Series. Plus, specially tagged trucks get an additional 1,000 smart bonus cash. Dad, who's Captain D? Legend has it. It was World War II fighter pilot Captain George Dillinger who crash landed on a deserted island. He survived there for years, perfecting his seafood recipes until he learned that the island wasn't so deserted after all. That's not true, is it? Not even a little, Bobby. The truth is, our new Fish and D's Jumbo Coconut Shrimp Meal is sure to be one of your favorites, like our popular sampler meal. For full meals starting at $4.99, it's got to be D's. Now through Tuesday, shop the Rooms to Go store-wide mattress sale and get ready to sleep better thanks to this special offer. Buy a king-size mattress set for the price of a queen set. That's a king for the price of a queen. Starting at an amazing $699. Choose from four great brands. Plus, get great savings on mattresses throughout the store and special interest-free financing until 2021 on iComfort and Tempur-Pedic. That's now through Tuesday at the Rooms to Go store-wide mattress sale. We're the car dealer in your family. Get these summer trade-in specials now at Wilson County Hyundai. New 2017 Elantra, a low $13,799. New 2016 Sonata, $17,999. Or zero APR for 60 months plus $1,000 cash back. New 2017 Santa Fe Sport, $24,99. New 2016 Veloster, $4,600 off. It's trade and save. You'll find the Bone Family tradition right here at Wilson County Hyundai. 
Get your pain discount and drive out in a new Hyundai. And welcome back to our continuing coverage of the celebration of life for legendary Lady Vols head coach, Pat Summit. The service, of course, is over and behind us, Bob. People are starting to uh, come out. Cars are moving the traffic and everything. People are on their way home. But look in there... the statue, Anne. I mean, it's just amazing. Behind us is the statue of Pat Summit. And it's been like this for a couple of weeks now. Look at all the people back there mm -hmm. dressed in orange putting flowers down, taking a minute to take a picture with themselves, taking a picture of the statue itself. I know it really I have plenty of them. It really says an awful lot about <laughs> these folks as they left this service and what's on their mind and how they want to continue to pay tribute to Pat Summit. And you know what's on their mind, too, are those really beautiful remarks from her son, Tyler, as he talked about his mother, the mother that many of us probably did not have the insight into, but also the mother who loved others. I'll tell you, too, we had some great remarks from Peyton Manning when he called her a friend and talked about her Alzheimer's disease and how much it meant to her to be a fighter of that disease, not just on mm -hmm. the athletic field, but to, to go beyond that. Let's listen to what Peyton had to say. We had a special bond, a bond between two friends, a bond between two proud ambassadors for this university that we both loved. Our bond was forged in part... Our bond was forged in part by the searing heat of competition which drove us. That bond was colored by Tennessee orange and rang out to the tune of Rocky Top. Nineteen years ago, I came to see Pat Summit deciding whether I should stay for my junior or senior year, and I sat in her office for two hours. She given me great advice on what she thought I should do. As a coach and as a person, Pat did more then outthink uncertainty and stared down competitors. She stared down doubts. If you were recruited by Pat and her staff, it was like a casting call for greatness. She epitomized the Lady Vols. More than that, and because of her actions, she gave new depth and dimension to the word lady. Her memory... Her memory should be like the perfect game plan that drives every one of us to fiercely go after our dreams, no matter what opposition gets in our way, and to do it with as much grace as ferocity, and in the end, to generate respect for the way we went after it with abandon. How you doing? Okay. That was... Uh Peyton Manning uh, talking about his dear friend, Pat Summit. And of course, Peyton serves as an yeah. honorary chairperson for uh, Pat Summit's Alzheimer's Foundation. And the folks there want to remind you that that clinic, which is a partnership between the foundation and the University of Tennessee Medical Center, is going to open in August, and it is going to offer support for families with Alzheimer's. We said it was a who's who at the ceremony, the celebration of life. Life. UT quarterback Josh Dobbs is one of those paying his respects. He's kind enough to join us for a few minutes. Josh, it was really a moving, moving ceremony. Talk a little bit about the impact of Pat Summit on your life as an athlete leading the University of Tennessee. Well, you know, she's had a, she's had a huge impact on the University of Tennessee. She has her own statue. You know, they, they talked about 1,098 wins, eight national championships, 100% graduation rate. So, you know, to me, coming here, you know, hearing about Pat Summit, it was clear that she did got it done on the court and off the court and, you know, changing the lives of her players. And then to be a part of her ceremony and to see the impact and how many lives she touched, you know, it was great to see and a great event to be a part of. You're a busy man. You've got the season ahead of you. Why was it important for you to be there tonight? Just to give back tribute. You know, unfortunately, I was never able to meet Pat Summit, but I heard, of course, heard great things about her and, you know, hearing about her tribute and, there's going to be a lot of people there. I definitely wanted to be here and, you know, um, just be a part of it, being a part of something bigger than me. And so to see, you know, guys like Peyton Manning um, and, and her assistant coaches, all of her former players that came back just to be a part of this ceremony, it was definitely great to see. Her work ethic has to be legendary. I know you must have heard about how she believes in preparation and dedication. Definitely, definitely, especially to hear from her son, you know, kind of reminded me of me and my mom. So <laughs> it was funny, you know, hearing the, the stories and you know, just, just hearing them, you know, just open up about their relationship with, with Coach Summit. 
and, and just to get to know her, even though I was never able to get to know her. So yeah, it was definitely great to see. You know, Coach Summit was all about the work ethic. Mm -hmm. She would want you to get back to work. She would want you to prepare for the for the coming season. Are you excited about the coming season? A lot of expectation, a lot of pressure on your young shoulders. Great team, though, yeah. you got there. Definitely, definitely, definitely excited for sure. You know, um, we're, we're excited about the opportunity we have. You know, we have opportunity, you know, just change Tennessee and continue to building on the legacy that we started here. So we're excited about the opportunity. Obviously, we have a lot of key, key components in place. And so now it's just time to go out and execute. But, you know, it all starts in your preparation, as Pat would say. Mm -hmm. So it starts in your preparation, what you're doing right now in the off season to prepare you for the season. Terrific. Josh, thank you so thank much you for so stopping much. We're looking by forward and talking to you to playing us. in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Have a great me. season. Thank you. Josh Jobs, the quarterback at the University of Tennessee, and, you know, fine young man, and a lot of pressure on him, a lot of expectations for UT this year. And Pat Summit would be smiling that this young Absolutely. man was there at his, uh, her service tonight. When she was, when she was uh, actually still able to coach here, it was pretty a regular routine for um, the Lady Vols to work out with the men, too. <laughs> so they got a lot of philosophy from Pat Summit in terms of what are the keys to success. You know, Pat Summit, as we talked about, had such an impact beyond the basketball mm -hmm. court. I talked with the voice of the UT Vols, Bob Kessling, and he had a lot to say about her legacy beyond the University of Tennessee. Let's listen to what Bob had to say. The way she treated people and how special she thought everybody around her was. I mean, when you would, the thing I remember when I was doing the games back in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, we'd go on the road and we'd do our post-game uh, radio shows and there'd be 200 fans from the other teams <laughs> waiting to get her autograph. I mean, how many visiting coaches are signing autographs for the other teams? And that was so amazing and there were little girls being there and they wanted to get, uh, I remember we were in Kentucky one time and these a couple little girls in Kentucky cheerleader outfits are getting the picture taken <laughs> with Pat Summit. I mean, where else does that happen? And I think that just showed you, she was bigger than Tennessee basketball. She was bigger than the university. I mean, she was a, she was a national icon that people looked up to because of what she did and what she gave back to the game. It is pretty amazing when you think of someone in a University of Kentucky jersey <laughs> wanting to get Pat Summit's <laughs> autograph. That's pretty impressive. It is indeed. Somebody else, let's let's bring in Corey Curtis here, News to Sports Director. And Corey, you have been all day here all day as we have, and you've seen people come in to pay tribute. You've talked to people who mm -hmm. pay tribute. What stands out in your mind at the end of the day? Well, you know, I think what was really surprising to me was is when we got here, all the smiles. Everybody was yeah. all smiles talking it about nice? Pat Summit. It was, but then when the ceremony started. It got a lot. I mean, there were funny times, but it was also very serious and very sad. You talked about the video tribute. I mean, if you didn't well up when you were watching that, you simply weren't alive. I think what strikes me most is we've talked about the wins and the losses, how important this one person is to so many people. And that's just here in Knoxville. And she's touched way more people than that. She is. She has elevated not just basketball, but women's sports to a level that it wasn't even close to before she got involved. And there are so many men and women in the world who owe her so much and don't even know it. Gino Oriema was here tonight, yeah. her that was bitterest impressive. rival. <laughs> but he knows, and I, don't, I haven't heard him say this, but he could not be Gino without Pat. Pat kicked down the door because there was, women's basketball was not an NCAA sport when she took over, and she has elevated to something that is great. We saw it in person in Nashville, and now he has picked up the torch for her and is, and is leading the charge. You know, she was the last one I want to talk about her accomplishments. Yeah. But let's talk about her basketball accomplishments. Yeah. They are unbelievable. Well, we only talk about her as a coach, I, I, and she was a great player. She was a terrific she player. She was an Olympian. She was actually an Olympian player while she was the coach here at Tennessee. Exactly. And But um, you know, she was a great player um, coming out of Cheatham County, and, and a great player. UT Martin was their all-time leading scorer. But the achievements as a coach are, are wonderful. 1984 gold medal. We never talk about that. I mean, she's got a gold medal. That's fantastic. Uh, eight national championships, eight-time SEC Coach of the Year, seven national time, national back -to -back Coach of the national Year, back-to-back -back national, -back national champions. And when, and when you talk about great players of the game, legends of the game, so many of them wore this uniform. When I, I mean, when I think women's basketball, 
Candace Parker, Tamika Ketchings. These are the people I think of, and they all wore orange. And so many memories just tumbled back into my mind tonight because when Tamika Ketchings, who everybody calls Ketch, <laughs> got up to speak, gosh, in my mind, I saw the three Meeks. Yeah. That was the season that, you know, was a championship season for them. Tamika Randall and uh, Shamiqua Holesclaw, and, and then also uh, Tamika Ketchings. What a dynamic trio that was. Well, I know, and a lot of people probably still consider that the best women's basketball yeah team to ever take the floor and it's it's tough to judge one generation against the next but that group was so down so dynamic and so incredible and that was where pat had built something and she'd already had great teams in national championships yeah. but that's when you knew she had built something special they were it they were top of the mountain she had taken this team from zero to the mountaintop yeah. and uh she the was beginning the, of a dynasty. The first one to do it. The how first hard and it. how impressive has it been for Holly Warlick to fill those shoes that she knows and would tell you she can never fill, but what a hard job. Impossible. And she's done, and she's done a great job at it. Well, it's, it's very difficult. They always say you never want to be the guy to replace <laughs> the guy, and, and in women's basketball, she's the guy. I mean, it's, it's just that simple. And you know it hasn't always gone as smoothly right um, and frankly I don't think anybody could have expected it to I think the job she did this year rallying that team to the elite eight was amazing and it's gonna be interesting to see kind of how they move forward from this point forward because you know Pat was still you know when people talked about this team, they yeah. still talked about Pat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's Holly's team now. It's that simple. I mean, it will always be Pat's program, but it's Holly's team. And she's got to she's gotta keep moving forward. Speaking and Holly, she had eloquent words oh, tonight about her friendship with when, Pat. When she talked about, once you're a Lady Vol, you're always a Lady Vol. I think that was the line of the night. And I think we have uh, a little tape we want to show you now of her uh, words at the ceremony. Pat, it's with a heavy heart that I say goodbye to you today. I, I can't begin to tell you the impact you've made on, on my life. You've helped me mature, you've helped me grow. You've taught me the game of basketball. But I think more importantly, you taught me what life's all about. And when I look back, I know I have memories. I got great pictures, I have videos. I have you on my mind and I'll always have you in my heart. But I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you, Pat. You take that smile up to heaven. And you take those blue eyes and you stare down anybody that's not doing right. I know you're good at that. And then I know you put an arm around them and hug them. Tell them everything's gonna be okay. And I know right now you got your arms around me. Tell me it's gonna be all right. I love you, Pat. With all my heart. I hope you rest in peace. And those of you who were able to watch the ceremony at home, you know that she was not the only one shedding tears after those comments mm -hmm. at all. I mean, there wasn't a dry eye in the house at that point. I was just sitting in front of a TV and, you know, I, a hardened sports guy of 25 years, and I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm weepy just yeah. watching it. You see the raw emotion. I was talking with you guys in the break. You learn how important you are in life with how many people show up in your death. Look and at this how many people have is up. absolutely amazing, and I, and I think everybody they showed didn't have a dry eye after that. A lot more to come as we continue our coverage of the celebration of life for Pat Summit. We're going to show you some more of the great remembrances when we come back. Thousand to choose from. Beeman Toyota gives you the Toyota you want at the price you want. Rav4 starting at twenty-four two. Camry for twenty thousand six. Corolla starting at seventeen two. Zero financing for seventy-two months available. Twenty-four seven at BeemanToyota.com. Downtown Nashville. 
Now through Tuesday for our store-wide mattress sale, Rooms to Go made a very special purchase. Get this luxurious Therapeutic Pillow Top Queen mattress set for just $299. $299. So hurry in. Plus get big savings on other amazing mattress sets from the best brands. Like this Sealy Posture Peter Queen set, just $577. This Beauty Rest Recharge Queen set, $577. Or this Serta Perfect Sleeper Queen set, also just $577. Now through Tuesday during the Rooms to Go store-wide mattress sale. The coolest rides, the best prices, that's Wilson County Motors. Ask for your Mitchell discount. Get here quick for these summer sell-down specials. Over $11,000 off this new 2016 Silverado truck. Over $11,000 off. Amazing. Chevy Cruze, $16,989. Chevy Malibu, only $20,989. This GMC Sierra, now $12,000 off. See more at WilsonCountyMotors.com. Hurry and soon. Dad, who's Captain D? Legend has it. It was World War II fighter pilot Captain George Dillinger who crash landed on a deserted island. He survived there for years, perfecting his seafood recipes until he learned that the island wasn't so deserted after all. That's not true, is it? Not even a little, Bobby. The truth is, our new Fish and D's Jumbo Coconut Shrimp Meal is sure to be one of your favorites, like our popular sampler meal. For full meals starting at $4.99, it's gotta be D's. With a thousand to choose from, Beeman Toyota gives you the Toyota you want at the price you want. Rav4 starting at 24.2. Camry for 20,006. Corolla starting at 17.2. Zero financing for 72 months available. 24-7 at BeemanToyota.com. Downtown Nashville. And welcome back to our coverage of the mm -hmm. celebration of life for Pat Summit. I said this earlier, Ann, and I, I meant it a lot, too, that this is truly a privilege to be part of this. And we see all these fans at Pat Summit's statue. I think it's a privilege for them to be here tonight to pay their respects to her and her legacy. Oh, absolutely. I've covered a lot of stories, you know, in my career. And I am so honored to be here tonight to uh, pay tribute to her and to also bring these images to our viewers back home in Middle Tennessee. It is such an honor. Some of the more moving images tonight were presented during a video presentation and we want to share that with you right now. You deserve it. So go get it. That's what you got to think. You got to go get it. You got to earn it. They don't respect you. They don't think you can play out there. You got to show some fire and some competitiveness. I don't know about y'all, but I want to win a national championship. championship number eight in 08. It was like the air got let out of the room. We lost a, a superhero <laughs> um, and a great friend in the end. It, it's, um, Pat was just a great friend. Pat was definitely the head of our family. We followed her. Our family followed her for advice. We leaned on her in a lot of tough times, and she definitely was our leader. Pat Summit was a remarkable example to everybody around her. The influence she had on her student athletes was phenomenal. But she also had a great influence on all the rest of us who were around her. I think Pat's role on this earth was to be a pioneer. I think God gave her a gift of the voice, the presence, to show people that you can really do anything you put your mind to. That's the type of person she was, and there's nobody like her. It was never just about Pat. It was really never just about women's basketball. It was about making a difference in young people's lives. She was a superstar. They wanted everybody to treat her like a farm girl from Henrietta. And when I think about her not being here anymore, I just absolutely think about what we've lost as a person. Wow, this 
this is hard. Pat, I want to thank you for every moment, every minute I had with you, for giving me the opportunity, a dream come true, to play for you, to play for Tennessee, to represent the state of Tennessee. I really looked up to you. I always will. You're our hero. I love you. Like you're my mom. And I'm so thankful that you allowed me to be a part of your life. We're gonna do the best we can to carry on this legacy that you've built and continue the Lady Ball tradition. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to really miss you, and I love you. Pat, it's with a heavy heart that I say goodbye to you today. I, I can't begin to tell you the impact you've made on, on my life. You've helped me mature, you've helped me grow. You've taught me the game of basketball. But I think more importantly, you taught me what life's all about. And when I look back, I know I have memories. I got great pictures. I have videos. I have you on my mind. And I'll always have you in my heart. But I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you, Pat. You take that smile up to heaven. And you take those blue eyes and you stare down anybody that's not doing right. I know you're good at that. And then I know you put an arm around them and hug them. Tell them everything's gonna be okay. And I know right now you got your arms around me. Tell me it's gonna be all right. I love you, Pat, with all my heart. I hope you rest in peace. It was that video montage at the end was just about hard stopping for me to be able to see her from the very early years up until what we know now. And I usually think of the uh, flip side of the loss that, that, that we have incurred with her passing. There is the blessing that we had of the opportunity to be able to have her in our lives for all of those years. You know, as touching as Holly Warlick was in the end of that video, she also got the best line of the night and the funniest line of the night when she talked about Pat Summit being a speed demon and actually <laughs> giving a false name when she got pulled over for speeding by a police officer and brought the house down. It was a terrific line. It, it really was. said a lot, too, about Pat Summit. Always in a hurry to get there, always in a hurry to succeed. A part of that the, competitive take spirit. On the next challenge. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we've talked to a number of people who were so gracious to come up before our cameras today and share their remembrances of Pat Summit. One of them was Betty Wiseman, the great Betty Wiseman from Belmont University. And let's hear what she had to say. She was um, between her junior and senior year in high school. She came to my high school basketball camps at Belmont University. And uh, I just remember her so fondly as um, a very passionate young gal, tenacious, loved the game, loved to play. Uh, she even got a special award at my camp. Imagine that. And what was the award? Most outstanding camper. <laughs> Didn't work out that way. I tried to recruit Pat, but um, she went to UT Martin, where her brother had gone, and uh, wow, the sky the, it was the limit for her up there, and uh, you know, the rest is history. So happy God had another plan for her life. Yeah. 
And of course, our teachers and our coaches often see things in us, in <laughs> our potential, that we don't see in ourselves. And even at the early age of her seventh and eighth grade years, uh, Betty Wiseman was able to see greatness in Pat Summit. She was right, wasn't she? Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. Stay with us. Our coverage of the celebration of life for Pat Summit continues after this. the new benchmark of minivans, the all-new 2017 Chrysler Pacifica, or hold on tight as you let loose with the 2017 Fiat 124 Spider. Happiness loves company. It's the summer clearance event now at Beeman Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Murfreesboro, I-24, exit 81B. Everything okay? Sitter's got it covered. Oh, Charlie's Prime Rib Lovers Weekend for two. Half a pound of slow-roasted hand-carved prime rib and a side with a shared appetizer. Just $13.99 per person. Only at Oh, Charlie's. Yeah, I like this right here. The Ford Freedom Sales Event is on, and Zero for 72 is back on 2016 Ford Focus, Fusion, and Escape. Plus, specially tagged vehicles get an extra 1,000 smart bonus. That means freedom from interest and freedom to choose with Ford, America's best-selling brand. Now get 0% financing for 72 months. Plus, specially tagged vehicles get a 1,000 smart bonus only at the Ford Freedom Sales Event. It's time for changing, not rearranging. Make every room all it can be. You get it fast, we make it easy. At rooms to go, easy to see. The price you pay, low every day. The help you get, you just can't be it. That's really all you need to know. Decorating's easy, rooms to go easy. Decorating's easy at rooms to go. Wednesday, the weekday that's always a winner. Oh, Charlie's Free Pie Wednesday. A free slice with any entree. For a limited time, try our creamy lemon supreme pie every Wednesday at Oh, Charlie's. It's the summer clearance event going on now at Beeman Ram Truck Center. 2016 Ram 1500 Bighorn, up to $11,000 discount, over 100 to choose from. Hurry in for a great deal. Beeman Ram Truck Center in Murfreesboro. Access BeemanDCJR.com. She knew Gino was here. Welcome back to our Celebration of Life for Pat Summit. And you know, we, we've seen so many dignitaries and other officials here. One of Pat Summit's longtime friends, former Nashville sportscaster, ABC Good Morning America's own Robin Roberts, was Absolutely. here and so eloquent performing as MC tonight and talking about her personal relationship with Pat Summit. Let's listen to what Robin had to say. It's here in the house that Pat built on the court that bears her name so fittingly. She's in our midst. She's here through the coaches, the players she raised, her beloved family, an extended family who she loved so much. And through all of us who benefited from her wisdom, her pearls of wisdom that live on in our hearts. A favorite of yours, Tyler, and mine too. Left foot, right foot, breathe. Left foot, right foot, breathe. Just keep on moving. She, of course, also lives on through her foundation. What a valiant, valiant fight she waged against it. And how, in many ways, bringing awareness and attention was her final gift. And of course, you know I love lady ball, basketball, oh, yes. <laughs> and, and it was never a surprise to look up in the audience and sit next to Pat would be Robin Roberts. She attended a lot of the basketball games, particularly on the games that they played where they would wear the jerseys. We back Pat, mm -hmm. those uh, that were for Alzheimer's research and fundraising, she was always there. And I was there when she uh, sang Rocky Top. Remember <laughs> Holly Warlick talked about how she couldn't sing and that was her biggest fear of singing in public. I was there for that, but I enjoyed seeing it a second time. Rocky Top, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Good old Rocky Top. Woo! Rocky Top, Tennessee. You gotta love it. Wow. Pat, I love you. You'll always be in my heart. We are gonna keep your spirit alive here at the University of Tennessee. And as Pat always said to me, 
Once a lady ball, always a lady ball. That was a very, very touching <laughs> moment there. And back to Pat singing Rocky Top. She was known to do whatever she needed to do to get excitement about <laughs> the Lady Vol program. You know, and Pat, that was a vintage moment that night. Pat Summit was very talented, very successful, but they were right. She could not <laughs> sing. <laughs> and Thank no goodness one, she no didn't one need to. to care. You know, <laughs> That's right. One, one quick thing. Uh, it was real important to Pat, and you know this, after she was diagnosed in 2012 with, with Alzheimer's disease and stepped away from the University of Tennessee, she started that foundation, started her own foundation mm -hmm. with proceeds going to Alzheimer's. She has raised over $800,000, and she, she told her, uh, the curator of the foundation, she said, I know I'm going to be remembered for basketball. She said, I know that, but I want to be remembered for fighting this fight and raising money and helping to try to beat this disease. She said, it's important for me to be remembered this way too. So she never felt sorry for herself and was always looking beyond herself Absolutely. to try to help someone else. It really says so much about the woman. It does indeed, her competitive spirit, because that was the biggest battle of her entire life. We want to bring Corey on in on this. Biggest battle of her entire life, yep. and, and she wanted to fight it as a champion. Well, you know, the one thing that strikes me is she was only 58, 59 when she was diagnosed. Mike Krzyzewski 72 years old. Pat should still be on the sideline. Yeah. And I think when she got originally diagnosed, we all thought we would see Pat fight this fight for a decade. But it just accelerated so quickly. It took her out of the game. It took her out of the spotlight. And, and it was a shame because if anybody was going to be able to stand up and make a difference, it was somebody like Pat Summit. And I think Peyton Manning had some powerful words mm. because, you know, we all know what this disease does. But his poignant moment was when he said, when we're all gone, everyone will remember our friend Pat Summit. How badly will not just the University of Tennessee but women's college basketball miss Pat Summit? Well I think you will always miss the legends of the game but she built the sport and there are other people taking the sport on now. I was counting on my way here the number of coaches that were players and assistants under her and I think there are almost 20 now <laughs> that are head coaches at some level. And you know one thing that will always live on that Pat gave to all of us, and that is her formula for success. Yeah. It takes hard work. It takes dedication. And remember when she first started out in 1974 as the coach of the Lady Vols, she washed the uniforms. She drove van. She did it all. She built this dynasty at UT from the ground up. She laid the carpet in the locker room and painted <laughs> it. She, she literally did it all. And everybody talked about her being more than a coach. I think Tamika Ketchin, she was more than a coach. Mickey DeMoss, she was more than a coach. She was leader. Holly Warlick even said she was a coach, a friend, and a mentor all in one. We see great coaches, Bill Belichick and some of these guys. She's more than that. She's a great human being, and she it takes a special person to change lives, and she changed lives and changed the world. It, it's one thing to draw up great plays or to recruit great yeah. players. It's another to change the world around you and make it a better place. She put that stamp on it, and that's why she'll never What do you think her legacy is going to be? Is it going to be basketball? Is it going to be something else? Is it going to be just her as such a leader? Yeah, I think, I think leader is the number yeah. one word there. She didn't take no for an answer. At a time when people weren't willing to embrace women's athletics, women's basketball, she said, I'm gonna give you something to embrace. And not, it started in Knoxville, and then it just went from there. And she wasn't afraid to fight the big fight. And another thing that uh, it brings to mind that kind of sums up everything tonight is, all night long, we have heard Pat herself so it, say, it is not about me. It is about all of you. Well, tonight, Pat, yeah. it is about you. It certainly is. It's about her legacy. It's about Pat Summit as a human being. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage of the celebration of life of Pat Summit. It has been our honor to be here Absolutely. in Knoxville, to be a little part of it. Again, we appreciate your tuning in, and we also appreciate very much being part of this event. And don't forget her foundation.